This video is for educational purposes only. Only test your own hardware. Doing otherwise is illegal. Don't be a skid. What's going on, you guys? It is The Talking Sasquatch, and it's great to have you back. So once in a while, projects come along that are just so good that I feel like I have to revisit it. My first video on the Evil M5 project by my buddy, The Other One, I think I made that like a year and a half ago. And since then, he has put so much good work into this project, added so many features that it really, really does warrant a revisit. Plus, this one actually comes with an absolutely amazing story about how The Other One was able to hack other hackers at La Hack 2025 in France. And not just some random people at the hack no he was actually able to get a karma attack to work against somebody doing a live presentation the evil m5 project is absolutely jam-packed with features you can do so much stuff with this thing the other one built this tool is not just a penetration testing tool but also is a really good educational tool because it really goes to show you if people at the hack in paris are logging on to his wi-fi unknowingly well this really must be a problem all right, that's enough intro. Let's get into the Evil M5 project reloaded. Let's go. Now, originally when the Evil M5 project came out, it was actually called the Evil M5 Fire because it ran on an M5 stack fire, just like this one right here. Well, since then, he's got it running on pretty much everything that M5 has to offer, including the Atom, which I'll show you a little bit later on. I mean, some of these devices are small. And while that's kind of cool that you can run those on those small devices, also runs on the card pewter, which if you've heard me talk about it before, this guy is probably my favorite little piece of tech. Now, this little guy is absolutely a powerhouse. It's modular, so you can add almost anything to it. And even on Amazon, it's only like 40 bucks. And nowadays, when a Flipper Zero with a Wi-Fi board is gonna run you like almost, what, 250 bucks? That's a crazy good value. So I'm gonna show you how to install the M5 project onto pretty much anything the easy way. And I'm gonna show you exactly how the entire thing works. And then when we're done with all of that, we can go over the absolutely amazing story from the hack because I mean, that's almost not to be believed. But what you can believe is this segue to today's sponsor. Try Hack Me. I am so excited to be partnered with Try Hack Me as today's sponsor. I have used Try Hack Me for years. It's an absolutely fantastic way to get a hands on experience learning real world scenarios about cybersecurity. If you've ever wanted to learn hacking or to try to break into cybersecurity, Try Hack Me is there for you and it couldn't be easier. Try Hack Me takes all of the guesswork out of learning cybersecurity by making clear learning paths that anybody can follow. And it also gamifies the entire process, making it both fun and rewarding to learn cybersecurity. What's even better is that it's all browser-based. There's no setup necessary, and you can literally just jump directly into real-world scenarios. TryHackMe has all the tools you need. Whether you're into red teaming, blue teaming, or cloud, TryHackMe has a learning path made just for you. TryHackMe is used by over 5 million people globally, including me, so you can trust them to learn cybersecurity. And the best part? The platform is built to take you from day one with zero experience all the way to job ready with their guided learning paths and their career Hub. So head on down to try hacking using the link in the description to start learning for free. And if you want to go premium, use my code SQUATCH, S-Q-U-A-C-H, for 25% off of an annual plan. Thank you so much, Try Hack Me, for the support. You guys are awesome. All right, let's get back at it. All right, so I think in honor of the original M5 project, we're going to install it onto the M5 stack fire first. So let's hop on down to the desktop and get to work. All right, so here we are down at the desktop. We're going to go ahead and use the M5 burner software, which we've used before. And of course, you're going to download it from docs.m5stock.com slash en slash download. And if you scroll down, you'll find the M5 burning tool for whatever operating system you have. Super easy. Again, I'm not going to do that again because I've done that a billion times. So once we're in here, we want to go through and pick our device, right? So this is the core, but I also showed you earlier the Atom. So you can select the Atom and then start to flash to that. You can go to Card Pewter, flash to that. It's really, really, really easy. Just make sure you select the proper device. Also, I'm going to go ahead and plug my device in because it's going to show up in the corner, right? Boom, COM30. So now we know what COM port we're plugged into. It's very important because I have flashed all sorts of firmwares to the wrong devices. It sucks. So if you don't want to screw up your IPS Nixie clock again, make sure you have the right device in there. And better yet, if you can find a USB cord that doesn't carry data, use that to plug those things in so you don't have that problem again. That's what I did. All right, so moving on, we're just going to scroll down. All these awesome things on here. You can 
pretty much install any of this stuff. You will see things like Meshtastic on here, which just means that you're going to have to get a LoRa device to plug into whatever you're using. But again, you can use it for Meshtastic, which I love Meshtastic. So scrolling down, we'll run into the Evil Projects. Here we go, Evil M5 Core. All you got to do is hit download and then burn. Click that, click that, click this, and then we're ready to go. Now, I've already installed it, so we don't have to do it that way, but that's just how easy it is. It takes literally seconds to install pretty much any M5 firmware onto pretty much any M5 device. Again, that is why I absolutely love M5 devices. All right, so now that it's installed, we might as well pop over to the top-down camera and take a look. All right, so first things first, I actually wanted to show off. I've been printing so much stuff for DEF CON, and I made this absolutely awesome looking case for the Nyan box, which is actually going to be one of our badges that we have. This thing is absolutely sick. Obviously, we don't have the electronics in here yet, but ZR Kraken made the model and I did all the graphics for it. And I am absolutely obsessed with this thing. And, and also, it glows in the dark. Check this out. That is so freaking cool. I'm absolutely in love with this thing. It came out so good. And I actually had Pink Fox helping me out with some of my projects too. So she asked if I could make her a coin. So I made her a maker coin. So here's the DEFCON 33 Pink Fox coin with Pink Fox on the back. This thing came out so good that it actually made me want to try another project on something I thought might be completely impossible. But introducing the Kittens coin. We made Kittens her very own coin. This thing came out so good. And now check this out. I did not think this was possible because I normally put my high detail graphics on the top layer for adhesion. But this one I couldn't do it because I couldn't get it resolution. So check this out. That is absolutely the coolest thing I have ever made, I think. I am in love with those. I made her like a hundred of these things. I'm not going to get any of them if she wants to give me one that's fine. But yeah, if you want to get one of these, you're going to have to go find kittens at DEF CON because these things are sick and super, super rare. It was so cool that I made myself a really freaking big one. So this is one that I have just for fun. But yeah, I am absolutely obsessed. It came out so good. I couldn't have really asked for much else. I learned a ton on this. So keep an eye out. I will be making a video on how I made all these things in the future. If you're curious about how I make my 3D printed stuff. Okay, anyway, so I've already... Okay, anyway, so I've already got everything up and running on the M5 stack fire right here, but let me show you the workflow for installing this another way on the card pewter because I made an entire video on how to install loader to almost everything. So loaders on this as well. So what we can actually do is we can go over into the OTA option right there. Again, the contrast gets a little hard to see, but when we connect to my network, here we go, getting info from the repository, you can actually just go all the way over until you get to do, 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 evil card pewter, evil card pewter, evil portal, evil card pewter, boom. And then from here, you can just straight up install it from there. It's literally that easy. You have the option to install it right now. So that's what OTA install means, or you can download it to SD card, which I've done. So basically I've got like five different operating systems installed to the SD card that I can switch back and forth through. It is absolutely awesome. So I believe this actually is already running card pewter, right? So we're evil card pewter. So let's load the launcher. I love that graphic. That graphic just makes me happy every single time. And do to do, here we have the evil M5. That's uh, or evil card pewter for that matter, version 1.1.7. That's the latest one. So this is up and ready to go. So I'm going to switch over to the other device over there because it's easier to see. But you can even see here, I've got this little teeny tiny guy right here. I always never remember how to turn it on. My battery dead. I think my battery's dead. Steal the power from this guy. And then, eh. This is the littlest, teeniest, tiniest evil thing ever. It's super cool. So I believe this is a touch screen. I have to do this from memory. I don't remember exactly how it all works, but is that how that works? Yeah, so you can kind of click it and scroll through stuff and there's a button on the side. So this teeny tiny little, I mean like teeny, teeny, tiny little thing. This will actually run evil card pewter, which I think again is absolutely awesome. So yeah, if we go back over here, we can kind of see exactly what's going on. Now this has a lot of the similar stuff that we're used to seeing. So it is effectively gonna run the same type of Wi-Fi penetration test as Marauder. So you can scan the Wi-Fi, you can select your network, then you can clone the network. You can run captive portals, which is kind of what we're gonna do in a second because that's the really cool thing about this project. So start and stop captive portal. You change your portal so you can change what is actually gonna pop up when somebody logs onto that rogue access point 
because if you don't know what a captive portal is, it basically means that I'm going to host a Wi-Fi with this device. And when you log into the Wi-Fi, it's going to pop up a page that's going to effectively ask you for credentials or something like that, which is going to get focused right through this. Now, it's actually really cool the way he implemented it at Lahack, which is, again, we'll get to that in a second, but it's very, very, very cool. So this is also going to go through and sniff pretty much anything that's in the air, whether that's handshake packets or anything. I think this is actually the most capable ESP32 based firmware there is out there. So we can scroll through all that and see all the different things that this can do. It's very good. We'll also notice if we scroll all the way down here, we can also do war driving. But again, that means we're going to need a GPS chip in here, which that says no GPS stopping war driving. We don't need a war drive. But again, you can see just how capable this tool is. Now, what we're going to be focusing on today is what's called a karma attack, because you can do a karma auto or a karma spear. So let's flip cameras and I'll take a little time to talk about a karma attack. All right, so first thing we want to preface is again, this is all for educational purposes only. The other one actually did this at Lahack specifically to show other cybersecurity professionals just how dangerous an attack like this actually can be. All right, so a karma attack is basically exploiting the vulnerability that most devices have where they really like to reconnect to access points that they've seen before. So if someone were to say, go on Wiggle and find some of the most common access points in any given area, they might be able to spoof those access points to make, you know, devices connect to them. And that's just what the other one did. So actually, let's hop on down to the desktop and read through his recount of it all. And the other one was nice enough to do an entire write-up of this process and the experience. Also, while we're down, here let's hop on over to his github give him a star this guy is an absolute legend so if we go over here it's how i hacked hackers at lahack 2025 so basically he rolled up to lahack for those of you who don't know lahack is basically like defcon for france what he did is he brought a rig of eight esp32 c3s and two card pewters running the evil m5 project to perform these karma attacks using real world ssids taken from wiggle apparently this setup can handle up to a hundred connections all at the same time He's such a legend too. He set it up so obviously he's not trying to steal anybody's credentials or anything like that because he's an ethical hacker. What the victim saw was an educational captive portal that went through and explained exactly what was going on and how to protect yourself from that in the future. So if we scroll down, he's just talking about what the hack is. As he lovingly puts it, if DEF CON is Vegas chaos, the hack is Parisian anarchy. Super fun. I absolutely love it. So yeah, if we scroll down, he gives a little bit of an overview. Again, I have a link down below. You can read this whole thing for yourself. Now, he mentions that he's been actively working on the Evil M5 project for the past two years, and I've been keeping up with it the entire time. It's an absolutely awesome project. Again, one of my favorites. And he said through an extensive testing and experimentation, he realized that the attack surface of Karma Attack is surprisingly broad, especially when you carefully craft the SSIDs to mimic real-world open networks that people trust and connect to through their entire daily life. So if we scroll down again, he's got the rig of the eight ESP32 C3s with his two card pewters, which is just, look at this thing. This is such an awesome thing to roll up to a, a hacking event with. It's so cool. Yeah, basically what he did, he went on Wiggle and found all of these access points. And these are access points that people connect to every day we've got mcdonald's france free wi-fi free wi-fi is the do never connect to anything it says free wi-fi it's criminally stupid just never connect to anything that says free wi-fi but people do so they had the hack 2024 and the hack 2025 one of the things you're probably not supposed to do at hacking conferences is spoof the actual network but he did it in a way that shows how easily things can be manipulated and how easily devices can be compromised. So they probably gave him a pass for it. He actually says one of his regrets for the whole project is not actually logging how many people were jumping into his networks because it'd be really cool to see the actual number of people who logged on because he says within 10 seconds of loading up this SSID that I don't know if that says a word in French. I'm not French. Sorry. Within one minute, 10 people automatically signed on. That's absolutely bonkers for a cybersecurity convention. I mean, I find that to be absolutely amazing. I uh, I love it. It's so cool. And yeah, you can see right up on top here, all of the active connections on there. So basically, and this shows the website, his goal was to spread awareness to show how easily your devices will connect to a Wi-Fi, even if you don't ask it to. It's crazy. So this is the actual page that he had people looking at. So again, it talks about the M5 project and how karma attacks work. So people really understand just 
just how vulnerable they really are. So this is the fun part. At one point during the talk that was about fun with watches, hacking a $12 smartwatch with Bluetooth LE and three wires, the presenters Virtual Labs and uh, Xylocar, maybe, hopefully? Something unexpected happened, which was the machine got karma live on stage. What happened is the Linux distro that they were on automatically connected to their Wi-Fi access point and requested to load the actual page. Now, because Linux doesn't automatically load up pages when you, you know, have to log into something like your phone does, it didn't actively open the page, but they were able to see that this machine was compromised. I mean, either way, even if it didn't pop up the actual evil portal page, this is crazy and you can actually see if we scroll down here the perfect moment of stress for me unplugging all the things as soon as possible not to interfere considering that he respects that he has for these presenters but virtual lab said well there's somebody playing with the wi-fi because he actually figured out that something was going on that shouldn't have been and what's fun too is that he ran up to the presenter right afterwards and explained what happened and apologized for it. But of course, in situations like that, everyone's just like, wow, that's actually crazy that you were able to do that. And then, so he shows them his devices and the guy's just like, wow, what is this? That's so cool. And mind you, he wasn't the only person running rogue access points at LaHack, just like at DEF CON. Cause I mean, I had rogue access points open myself. I was spamming all sorts of crazy stuff. I had my Ponegachi running. I was spamming fake flipper zeros. I was doing all sorts of stuff because i mean hacking conferences what else are you gonna do there and again it's pretty funny he talks about the reactions to what was going on he said the reactions were a priceless mix of amusement respect and concern people's eyes widened some laughed some took notes it sparked real conversations about trust wi-fi behavior and how even tech savvy users can get caught when ssits are cloned just right he says the best part too and i can totally see this is people were asking about what his device was and he just asked them to look at their phone first to see if they were connected to his access point and a lot of times they were and just to show you how kind of unknown karma attacks were he talked about how so many people walked up to him they really didn't understand what was going on or how it worked and these are french cybersecurity professionals this stuff shouldn't be brand new but again the awareness just isn't there so his conclusion goes on he says mission complete even hackers can get caught. The karma attack still seems to be effective with a significant attack surface on 2025. Again, this shouldn't be this easy to do. This shouldn't be this big of a vulnerability given, again, it's 2025. Wireless security should be like super tight, but apparently not. What an absolutely wild story. And thank you so much, The Other One, for A, making such a cool project and B, doing such a great write-up on exactly what happened at LaHack 2025. Now, that being said, is this something I might try at DEF CON? Maybe. Of course, I wouldn't actually do a Karma attack on the actual DEF CON Wi-Fi because, again, that's I'm not going to do that. But if there's some free Wi-Fi access points around that I think people might log into, I might throw up another informational page just like his because, again, I think more people really need to understand how karma attacks work and how vulnerable they might be. All right, so this is such a great project and such a great dude that I really wanted to make sure I focus on this one more time and share the story. Thank you guys so much for watching. You guys are absolute legends. If there's any other projects or cool stories you want to talk to me about, you want me to talk about, leave a comment down below. Please make sure to subscribe, smash that like button. We'll catch you next time.